Hello, my name is Trider. Welcome to part two of the Roman Library tutorial. Let's pick up right where we left off. All right, so last time we had finished about halfway up the building and we're going to be building again our second set of columns on the exterior. Uh, now, the columns that we will be building up top there, they are going to be uh, copies of these, everything that we have built. So what you see down here for the column bases that you remember that we built, up here, you are building a second set of column bases directly on top of absolutely all of the column bases that you did below. So let me just uh, start with a bird's eye view of this from the top down so you can see that. You can see all the diorite column drums in the middle here, as well as their associated column bases. And of course, where they are attached to the walls, over here, they are the same as we did down here. You're just going to be building all of that again, sort of uh, like stacking it on top of each other. Uh, but there will be changes. There are changes on the interior that has a different layout, as well as when we get towards the top, that is going to have a, a different set of entablatures on it. Uh, but bear that in mind as we go. You're going to be building your column bases here along the outside here, like so, on top of the uh, pediment on the side that we built last time. And of course, once you build one of those, you've got a tree, and then the same design at the front is at the back here, as you see done there. Not too difficult. Now for the interior, um, you just want to build sort of a wall of cobble all the way around. First stone bricks and then cobble. Remember we're doing the, uh, the alternating uh, layering and banding of the materials. And let's start at the front here and take a look. So here's where we come up from the stairs from below that we did. So we have a little uh, banister here with some chiseled stone bricks cobblestone walls and we have a attached uh, pillar or rather pilaster at the uh, wall back here and on the sides we have some designs for bookshelves of course we have the wooden buttons here on the exposed tree trunks the ones that are on their sides done like so for decoration so let's take a look at the ones on the outside first it's a simple repeating design by the way once you build one of these you then want to just keep building them beside each other until you get something resembling that pattern there, or you can choose to use your own pattern. All right, so at the back here, we have some stairs now, and these will be going up this way and then over that way to get to the last level of the building. I think we're on the third floor currently. And we've got a, uh, a potted fern around here. And over here we have some details of some chests and some uh, filing cabinets on their sides with the uh, tree trunks and the buttons. Over here we have two more enchanting stations, one here and one here. You can, of course, if you have a design of enchanting station you prefer, you can use that instead of this. Uh, my decorations here are, of course, just suggestions. Feel free to make changes as we go along. And again, you're just stacking up the bookshelves here and everything. I, these are like little desks that you can sit at around here and uh, read a book amongst the stacks of uh, shelves and everything. Of course, you have to be uh, very quiet when you do that. There's a library after all. And at the front here, of course, we have another table, again, with some uh, chairs and everything. And a larger bookshelf back over here. And of course, everything on this side over here is a mirror of what is on that side over there. And we will move on to the next phase. So again, we're going up to blocks, and you're putting on your diorite column drums, like you see down there. Those should all be directly on top of the ones that you placed down below. Just to build those like that all the way around the building. Uh, over here at the front, we have some designs for the glass. Remember, we have the alternating panes and blocks. We have three windows for that. 
Uh, over here, let's go on the inside. So here is that uh, that main bookshelf here. You're just stacking those up, and the bookshelves on the side here with their associated chests. Of course, the the shelves and the chest are just uh, completely for decoration. Now behind those, we do have some windows that start at these levels right here, by the way. So let me just take a look at this from the outside so you can see. And uh, one of these window sections, that's a module in a repeating pattern that goes all the way along the side of the building till you get to the back. And of course, the back is a repeat on the exterior of what you did at the front. So let's take a look at uh, the bookshelves over here along the side here with these little uh, desk alcoves. Got some spruce stairs on those to cap those off for decoration. Over here we have the stairs. We have three flights that go up, then a uh, two by two landing, and no wait, that's a two by six. No, two, two by three. I'll, I'll learn how to count one of these days. Two by three landing, and then we go up a uh, set of stairs here. And that's going to take us up to the next floor. Here is that same set of stairs. From below, the design with the stone bricks for the banister on the side there. And the rest of the books over here and the chest on top. And one of them is uh, currently bugged. Um, but you can see that design there and along here for the stacks of bookshelves. Not too complicated, just a bunch of repeating patterns, as I do. Over here, let's go up to the next phase. Of course, two more blocks up uh, on your uh, diorite column drums all the way around the building. All the columns on the interior and the exterior. As you see done there, the windows are all also being extended up. All of the windows that you built around the building, like so. And I think I neglected to mention the, the to show you the, the uh, atrium over here. Uh, from this side, anyway, we have some uh, cobblestone walls that are being put along the uh, the top of the entablature from the upside down stairs that you built in the in the uh, rectangle here. And behind those, you of course have more columns holding up the building, and we have some cobblestone walls on those here. And there's, there's of course a little landing here, a little clearing, where you can come out into the atrium and look at the the sky above and the uh, library below and everything there. Uh, over here we are finishing off these uh, bookshelves here with some uh, spruce stairs facing each other. Over here we have a short little column so we just have a uh, couple of stairs for that. It's about the, uh, the smallest column that we can fit in this space. On the top here we have some stairs and uh, tree trunks and, and wooden buttons to cap off these bookshelves here for this design along the side. And I believe also on the uh, little alcoves in the middle here. And uh, we finished all that last time. So here's a bit more of the stairs going up another three flights here. As you see there, let me show you that from below. So you can see it's just sort of covering the window here that uh, that couldn't be helped. And uh, let me show you all this from the top down here, from that completed phase there. All right, so let us go up two more blocks, and I believe we are now going to be building the fourth and last floor. So all the column drums, you know the drill. Two more blocks of diorite all the way around on all the columns, extending up the walls and the windows, as you see done here and along the sides here. Uh, now at these levels we have sort of a break in the windows here because this is where this here is where the fourth floor is starting so it kind of collides with that. So we had three blocks for the windows, a, uh, a thing for the floor there and we are continuing the windows again. And I, did we have that below? Uh, we had it below, yes, but it was in a different space because of the, the windows and everything for the first and the second floor. Uh, we did that break with upside down stone brick stairs, but up here uh, it looks like I did them with cobble. Although if you want to, you could substitute these for uh, upside down stone brick stairs there. That might look pretty good. 
might change that in the reference model. Uh, let's see. So I take a good look from the top down so you can see we are, of course, building the floor out of double stacked smooth stone slabs. And uh, you can see all of the uh, tree trunks on their sides with the buttons and everything because those indicate the, lo the locations of the next and last set of bookshelves. As you see done here. So I'll just show you this from the top. Of course, we have some fences and some chests and everything. And the fences are just there to uh, hold uh, torches like that. So those are optional if you don't want to build those. Like so, and here's a view of the back. We have uh, one small table up here, a planter for a fern, and the end of our stairs here. So the floor from below also forms the ceiling on this level here. We just have a one block thick floor. And that's why I went with the double stacked smooth stone slabs here, so we could have uh, some patterns uh, for the ceiling and the floor. Uh, here we're starting to build the uh, the top of the atrium, by the way, so let me just show you that. As we go, we have edged that out with upside down stone brick stairs all around the edges here. They are being uh, attached to the columns uh, right behind there. Uh, these two are freestanding. And it just continues attaching straight to the wall on the side here. And at various intervals, I think, what, every, every three blocks, we then want to put in a chiseled stone brick. And, well, it looks like it changes to four here behind the columns. They should attach to the columns. I think you can see from here how, how uh, that is laid out. All right. I think we have covered that in a sufficient level of detail, so let us move on. So we are finishing the columns now. The total height of these columns is, uh, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven blocks for your columns. And then we are now building the Corinthian capitals. These are the exact same design that we did down here for this. So you can just uh, skip ahead a little bit and build all of those. Where they attach to the building or where they are freestanding all the way around, you're extending, of course, up the walls and these side windows here as you see no surprises there um, on the inside here let me go back to the front we'll take a look at the bookshelf designs for these levels we didn't have very much space up here at this level so the bookshelf designs are quite basic as you see done along here Nothing too complicated. And of course we finished the uh, table and everything in there as well. And you are putting on the capitals on the interior columns at the same level. All right, let us move on to this next phase. Now we have something a little bit different. So we are building again the entablature design again that we built down here with uh, these these three blocks with the the couple here this corresponds to uh, this over here but we have these sort of uh, hanging over each other in other words we have four main tiers down here but then we have three tiers in the middle and two tiers over here on the side which are just uh, one block thick and of course, this is the same design that was used in the Library of uh, Celsus at Ephesus, and uh, that is why I, that is where I have shamelessly stolen the design from to replicate this uh, Greco-Roman themed library. Of course, it's divided into two sections because we have uh, Latin on one side and Greek books on the other, as was divided out the Roman libraries. That is how they would do it. Uh, over here, let's um, let's see. So I already told you about the capitals, and I think you can see the design, but let me just trace some of this out with the red wool. You can see what we're doing is we're connecting the column, um, the, the capitals with these lintels here, here, directly to the building, like so. I'll just show you that from below there, uh, from above there, so we can be on the same page. 
make sure there's no mistakes. And on the side here, you are building uh, just another stack of what you did down below here with this section. And build all of that again on top of here and uh, tie it into the building. And of course, the back is the same as the front. Over here for the lentils for the atrium, you are making just another rectangle, as you see done here. And behind those, you are extending uh, cobblestone lentils, uh, radiating out from the columns uh, to be attached to the walls. So we can have the, the interior structural support tied in to the exterior walls as we do, because we don't want things to fall down. Of course, it's Minecraft, so that wouldn't happen anyway, but uh, let's, let's pretend that it would. So we want to build it right. Uh, now, in here, we have, of course, the design, the finished design for the last of the bookshelves. As you see along here, it's a little cramped, but I'm trying to give you a good view of these. All you're really doing is putting uh, spruce stairs and a couple of tree trunks for the final designs for those. And uh, let us move on to the next phase where, as I said, we finish the entablature design. And here is a uh, close-up details of the side. It sort of uh, comes out and makes this little L shape, like so. And then I, of course, uh, made another little cutout over here. And then we have the, the four column pediment on the side, and then it, the pattern repeats again. Uh, here at the front, you can see we have now three main porticos with uh, the smaller ones on either side. With, of course, the, the upside down stone brick stairs serving as a cornice for the building. And that will complete the entablature. And behind that, we then want to put in these. Uh, um, uh, smooth stone double slabs here, and it looks like, did I make a mistake with the, uh, yes, I think, yes, I definitely did. All right, so a small correction on this, when you were doing this, so some of the numbers are going to be off, I didn't catch that. Uh, you want to extend this, just keep extending this back through here, uh, mostly, so, probably somewhere to here, wherever it starts, Back here, it looks like it starts just two blocks away from that. So you want to be extending that all the way to uh, there and just make a big rectangle. What, what's on this side? Mirror that back here. Uh, it looks like this was on the ceiling, so I did not catch that when I was going through the building. But we want the front here, we want this to have the same design as we do at the back here. And uh, let me go back to the front. So you can see in between where we extended the cobblestone to the wall, you can see on top of that we have some diorite, and we're sort of making smaller squares and smaller lintels, connecting those together in sort of cross-hatching pattern. And then on top of that, for a third layer, you are putting in the uh, double-stacked smooth stone slabs for the ceiling here. So let me go through here and uh, kind of give you a view of it over here. We're really cramped in this section, and it uh, looks like in, in this section that should be, this should be die right here. And in the middle of that, you should have the uh, the slabs here, and then we can see the, uh, the die right back here. So if that causes some confusion, my apologies. I did not catch that when I was going through the building. I guess if I had looked up, I would have seen it, but I didn't do that. Um, so uh, next phase, we have finished now stacking two layers of columns and entablatures. So we are now ready to, stack, uh, to create our roof. And we are doing that, of course, the pointy uh, triangular pediment type style. And um, it's going to sort of defy explanation. So I'm going to just give you really good tight end views of these. We're using cobble stone walls, uh, what, cobble stairs, um, 
nether brick slabs or black stone slabs in my texture pack, and then the red nether brick here. I'm quite fond of the red nether brick. Of course, if you're doing this roof in future versions of Minecraft and you already have the, uh, was it the copper blocks? Uh, that would be a good substitute, actually. If I had those, I might use that for this building. You can just substitute all of the, the half slabs and the, the red nether brick for copper, but just make the same pattern of this when you do. So I'm just going to pause along here and give you views from all angles so you can replicate the block designs that you see here. Like so, and from below here, we want to extend out the stone brick half slabs hanging over just a little bit along the front here. And uh, once you do one of these, by the way, uh, this one and this one are exactly the same design. I think you can see that from here. And of course, the ones on the back over there and uh, this over here is the same as this was over here. So behind here, we just start attaching this to uh, straight cobblestone walls with some stone brick half slabs there. And along this side here, we are making another large pediment. We're using the same patterns, but it's just uh, bigger, as you see done here. And of course, we are using some cobblestone walls here for uh, decorative uh, acroterion, very, very small ones over here. And it's a bit of the roof back there. And of course, uh, at this stage, I filled all of this in solid with cobblestone. Uh, but if you want to save some of the building materials on this, you can start leaving the roof. Everything's cobble up here. You can start leaving that hollow if you want. Uh, not, not, not these diagonals here, by the way. But every, every place is going to be covered by something. You can leave it uh, either filled with cobblestone or completely empty. That's up to you. If you want to make a little uh, attic or hidden space up there, that would be a good spot in this building to put such a place. So let's go to the next phase and give you a more complete look. So over here we have uh, cobblestone stairs stacked on each other and facing each other to make uh, this, little, this little thing here, which I routinely use for decoration on my buildings. You can see we have uh, these things at the front here. Of course, we're using them for uh, Acroterion at this phase here. Three of those, and behind that, we are building up a larger triangular section to make up the, the main body of the roof. So let me just give you a view of that from here. This is just a full blocks and a cobble, uh, a, a stone brick half slabs, not cobble. We do have cobble behind it, though what I'm trying to say. And behind that, of course, we have this uh, roof pattern that I do here. Of course, you can see we have a little diagonal going through it. But otherwise, it is a standard repeating pattern for the roof. So once you do just a little bit of this, you will immediately see how to do the rest of it, as you see done here. And of course, the other, the other uh, three sections or quarters of this roof are the same as the other one. So there's a good top-down view. Let's go on to the next phase where I give you another good top-down view. We'll start off with that first. And at this phase, we're getting ready to, I believe we are finishing off the side pediments over here. Like you see there, of course, in this building, it's a little bit weird. We have a two block center line going through all the sections. Two blocks going that way, and of course another two block one going straight through the middle here. I don't usually do that. I, like to, I try to like to keep my center lines as one block. Um, but in this building, the, uh, the spacing of the columns and everything to get the effect for the Greek library, uh, it, it, necessit it necessitated necessitated a, a uh, spacing of two blocks for that. So, um, 
now that I can speak properly again. So in here we have the glass roof for the atrium, which I've kind of been ignoring, but I, in, the, in the middle here, you're just putting another entablature uh, like you did, like you did for this, just stack another one of those on top of this, then fill in behind it with cobblestone. And then in between that, we are using full blocks of light blue stained glass and cobblestone as you see done here. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. We just want to make uh, two little ribs in there to sort of uh, connect everything. Uh, now, of course, the glass feature here, this is not really a Roman feature. This is a more modern type feature, but it looked too cool to leave off. So I decided to add it. Uh, but I am unaware of them using such a, a glass uh, roofed over atrium in Roman times. They would leave their at atriums actually just open to the sky. Um, so if you wanted to make the building more authentic, you could remove this section. Uh, and also for Minecraft, if you wanted to, I suppose you could move this and then you could uh, fly in and out of the building with your elytra. That might be pretty cool. But anyway, I'll, I will leave that up to you because this is now your library. You can do with it as you please. So over here, here are the, the side uh, pediments finished. And we're just about to finish the main ones as well. In fact, let's just skip to the end here. It'll be easier to show you. So we are putting our last Akrotarion on the top here. We are finishing off our uh, covered glass atrium, as you see done here. Let me, the, the glass is sometimes a little hard to see, so let me just trace of that out there. So it's just uh, two blocks wide, and then two more, and then two more, but you're going down a block every time you do those. And you want to have your uh, cobblestone ribs done alike, so here with the, uh, the full blocks and the half slabs. One last view from the top here. So you can see at a glance how everything has fitted together. And once you have done that, your Greco-Roman library will be complete. So I hope you have enjoyed the Roman library tutorial. Don't forget to take back your books before the due date, otherwise you'll, you'll get a fine. And I believe uh, the, uh, the Roman finds, uh, they're quite severe. And also, remember, you can download the entire world in the video description in case anything I said was unclear and you need to come here and take a look at it for yourself. And also, with that, I want to thank you very, very much for watching, and I will see you next time.